We were talking about a ball pit video idea for a while. And so it was one of those ideas that just sort of was like, well, it's a fun idea, it's a funny idea, we're just never gonna do it. And then months and months later, Roman Atwood comes out with his ball pit video. I decided to pull a prank on my girl with all these balls in Ohio. And then Freddie reached out to me after I uploaded and was like, dude, you still have those balls. And I was like, I sure do, and I want to get rid of them really bad. So before I know it, this massive pickup truck pulls up in front of our office with thousands and thousands of balls. And that's when the reality of what we were doing truly sank in. I was not sure we were going to be able to pull this off. Hey, Clint, what are you doing? <laughs> Moving on my computer. It's about to get crazy up in here. You don't want to lose anything in ball pit, you know? You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? most difficult parts was, I mean, we're in a giant playground, basically, and trying to keep everyone focused. Uh, so that, that was challenging. Yeah, just, why, why don't you clean close up? Yeah. How's your behind the scenes video going? Perfect. You getting all the shots? Oh, yeah. Day two, and uh, it's interesting. We've now, actually when, gotten when really good at moving where, around uh, the balls. It's like it's nothing. It's super easy. Where, where... Yeah, you go into this stuff thinking, oh, it's gonna be fun. The whole office is filled with balls. Like, what could go wrong? And it is a physical challenge to stand in that stuff. It was it was the most physically demanding thing I've ever done. Like it looks all fun and games until you start going across to grab cameras and mics. It's you're gonna be beat. You're gonna be sore and tired. Just walking through them is like little little things punching you all over your body. The ball pit destroyed my boom cable. We got the uh, the only cable available in the closet, and it's about 500 feet long. I dropped my phone with the ball pit balls, and I was like, well, I'm not finding that. And we didn't find it until we cleaned up the night after. It was broken. Oh! 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 So you like confused? Go back to confused. <laughs> <laughs> Working with John was uh, was really tough because he all my dialogue was basically yelled or screamed. Oh! 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 Ball monster. It's got several layers. It's got like two layers right here, and then I have back here garland that's being wrapped around more, so that just as he's walking, moving, there's actually something that's still adjusting with him. And some are velcroed on so that they fall off, and you know it looks like balls are falling off of him. They're very delicate, so naturally, when these monsters are moving around doing these harsh movements, like you're gonna have parts of the green screen suit revealed, you know, as they move. So it was our job on the VFX side to patch those holes up and make sure that it looks like a ball pit monster as opposed to a guy in a suit. Right, so it's really easy. You just reference the ball pit uh, balls on the monster and you move it, copy paste, patch it right over the green screen suit, track it on, and you're good to go. Pretty simple. John, Carmen, he was like, hey Clint, can you do like 2001 Beyond the Infinite ball pit avalanche? I'm like, John, if I tried that, my computer would explode. So, uh, no, but luckily, HP swooped in and saved the day, sent us a couple Z840 workstations, so thanks HP. The number one question that we get asked is, what camera do we use? And the answer to that is, all of them. We use all the cameras. And the number two question we get asked is, what computers do we use? And to answer that, let's get, I'm going to take you on a little trip down memory lane. So back in 2010 when we were starting out, 
most of those videos were shot on Sam Gorski from Corridor Digital, his personal HVX. We were editing a Final Cut Pro, using After Effects, and that was it, which was which was good at the time. But then you start to get DSLRs, you start to get red, we start to shoot stuff on red, uh, and we started to get a whole range of formats, and we realized pretty quickly that Macs like weren't cutting it anymore when it came to uh, post-production. So we switched over to a PC-based uh, sort of workflow right around 2011, somewhere in there. So it's like four years ago now. And PCs are nice because PCs, you can build it out, you can select your parts. You know, since we have a lot of visual effects and a lot of uh, After Effects, you know, we want good graphics cards for that. So we're using any, at the time it was all like NVIDIA, like gaming graphics cards, like top end, like gaming graphics cards. But the only problem when you build a PC is that sometimes stuff just messes up. This is a machine that I believe used to be owned by Ben. It's a personal machine. As you can see it has been scrapped. The sides are falling apart completely. It was waiting for a power supply that had gotten had blown up. The money that we saved by building the PC ourselves ended up being money that we just lost later. Motherboard might go bad, uh, uh, like a memory stick might go bad, and you know these things happen and you can fix it and swap it out. But when you depend on like computers working 100% of the time for your living, that's not a good scenario to be in. So pretty soon we realized, okay, we needed workstations. We needed ones that were like professional computers that we could depend on. And on top of that, because again, we had to do so many visual effects, we needed those computers to be up to date with what NVIDIA was putting out in terms of like, you know, the Quadro or like the K6000s, their workstation uh, graphics cards, the professional graphics cards. So around the end of season two, we switched over to using HP workstations for all of our editing and visual effects computers. Like, you know, Ball Pit, which we just did was on Z840. Season three was all Z840s. Uh, the Film School is being edited on the Z840s and also uh, the Hulu show that we're doing that will be showing you guys a little bit more of pretty soon here also uh, on the Z840. So that's basically what we use uh, as far as the editing and visual effects computers here at Rocket Jump. Uh, people of course still bring in their laptops and people have their own personal computers that they do stuff on, but primarily that's uh, that's the way that we do things. How long do you think it's going to take to, uh, to clean up all this stuff? <sighs> I don't know, and I don't want to be here for it. So once shooting wrapped, the next huge challenge was how do we get all these balls back into the bags? And luckily, art department came up with this brilliant system in which the balls were swept up into a chute. They would roll down the chute, and there would be bags waiting for them. And then all of the bags were loaded into the truck and kept in the storage. Doing this for what? Half hour? Half hour Looks at least. the exact same. The cleanup was just brutal. After filming for 12 hours, two days in a row, spending five hours after we wrap, it was nuts. We're gonna be dealing with these balls probably for months because Roman said that uh, he's still finding them in his house. It's been weeks since he did that video. We're like 90% still 20,000 balls. I've been creating this week at Rocket Jump for a while now, but never an episode on this scale. And it was a huge challenge, but I think we pulled it off and it's a crazy, disturbing, but I think funny and fun experience. And I hope you all enjoyed it. The film ends where, unfortunately, I am on probably my last day of being able to survive on piss. So I feel like we, we sail as far as we can and unless we find someone, I die. Cause you can't just drink piss forever.